All right, so I'm sure all of you have heard a lot lately about data, your data, what's happening to it online, where is it all going in this whole information and online ecosystem. So I thought I'd talk you through something, where it can go from a simple Google search all the way through to basically giving up all the information about you online. So we're going to start with Google, and we'll start with the, the Chrome browser where you might have logged in. And the reason we're starting with Google is because 92% of all searches in the UK are done on Google. That's why we say Google it and not Bing it or DuckDuckGo it. Now, with, on Google, you type into the search box, let's say you're looking for a new lamp. Okay, new lamp. The other thing we know about search is that three quarters of the time, people don't look past the first page of results. So basically, your entire internet experience is going to start with this first page of search results for new lamp. And you might have little ads on the top for buy me, buy me, buy me. You might also have, for example, let's say a review on the Guardian website. So you say, okay, I'm going to go to the Guardian website first. And I'm going to read more about this lamp. But before you can read about the lamp, you get that box, right? And it says, uh, we, we use cookies on this site. Now, do you want to accept all the cookies? or do you want to manage your choices? Now, first, what's quite interesting is how boring managing my choices sounds, right? As opposed to just clicking accept, right? So you click accept. Now, what you've done by clicking accept is actually give roughly 500 companies access to your use of what you do on the Guardian's website. Now, we're going to come back to those over here later. For now, let's just look at this Guardian review. So you've got a photo of the item, and great little narrative and oh this item's great you should definitely buy it and you think okay i'm gonna click buy now by clicking buy it takes you to amazon so now you're on the amazon website and the item is there but you think you know what before i buy this i'm gonna see if i can watch a video about it so you go back to that google search and you click the youtube link to a, a video review so now you're on youtube watching videos about this product. And oh, someone's raving, this lamp is great, it's modern, it's chic, look how great it looks in my room. And as soon as you finish watching that video, there's all this little autoplay, right? And, and before you know it, you're seven videos in because you wanna see this lamp? Oh, cool, look at this TV show about interior decoration. Oh, look at this celebrity that was on this TV show. Here's an interview with them somewhere else. You're in a YouTube rabbit hole, right? It's been 10 or 15 minutes. Finally, you think to yourself, oh, I forgot, I was trying to buy a lamp. So you go back to the Amazon website and you click buy. Well, now that you bought the lamp, you wanna let people know, I bought this really cool lamp. So you take that and share it on your Facebook profile. But what do you see in your Facebook feed? Well, among all these stories of your friends, you see an ad for the exact lamp you were just shopping for because that ad feed probably hasn't caught up yet to the fact that you've already bought it. But what you also see is that in your newsfeed is lots of pictures of your friends who have done up their house or redecorated. Because what's happening is all this activity is fueling the Facebook newsfeed and algorithm to drive content that relates to the thing that they mostly want you to do, which is click on an ad and buy something, right? So now you've shared that on Twitter and you think, oh, I've still got this YouTube page open. You pop back to YouTube and as these videos are going, you think, oh, my friends on Twitter would love that video. So you're on Twitter and you're sharing that. And what are you seeing in your Twitter feed? Huh, oh my gosh, very similar stuff to what you're seeing in your Facebook feed, right? Ads for other houseware products. Now you bought a lamp. Hey, do you need a side table? Do you need a new sofa? Oh, and increasingly each item is just that little bit more expensive because if you spent 20 quid, now you'll probably be happy to spend 40 and then 80. And before you know it, in that day, you've redecorated an entire room. The other thing you see on Twitter is this really interesting thing you want to read more about. So what do you do? Well, you end up back on Google, searching for that thing and starting this whole ecosystem again. But wait, remember that little tick we did earlier to accept all choices? Well, what that's done is sent little cookies, which track where you go, kind of like Hansel and Gretel, to roughly 500 companies. These companies are located all over the world. They're marketing companies, they're retargeting companies, third-party advertisers. 
right? And now that's going to influence every single thing you do online. If one of those companies sells the ad space for another website, you're gonna get ads based on everything you've done on the internet that's been sent to one of these companies and then driven to that site. All with one thing in mind, which is to sell you more stuff, right? All of these services I just described, save for when you've bought something, were free to use. And if something is free to use, that means you're the product. And the reason that's really, really bad is because you have no control over this process. You, you signed in here, you did a search there, and you ticked one box, and now 500 companies and this entire ecosystem follow you around the internet. Now you might be thinking, you know, the, the real issue here is privacy, and you're saying, well, I don't do anything wrong, it doesn't matter, who cares? The, the issue isn't simply that you don't have privacy anymore. The issue is who has access to your life as a result of this. Maybe one of these companies is in a country where the government requires them to report the data they've collected on different people. Now a country has data on you, right? It's pernicious and it's not like taking a physical object, you know? I have this pen here. It's either here or it's here. Your data can be replicated a million times over, transferred anywhere in the world in the blink of an eye. And so your digital you is no longer yours. It belongs to this infrastructure, this ecosystem, and this oligopoly of companies. Now, I don't know about you, but that scares me to death.